Hello friends, Cheryl here with Inked Pulp, and we're back with another Junk Journal January. Today is uh, day 23, and for day 23, we are going to be doing texture. If you're new to my channel, welcome! Um, sit back, grab something to drink, something to snack on, and hang out while we do this fun texture prompt. And if you're returning, no, I love you and appreciate your support, and welcome back. All right, today, because I'm going to be working with some texture paste, I'm going to do this outside of the journal because I don't want to mess it up. And then, so I'm going to work on this um, index card, or actually just a piece of cardstock, and um, then we'll glue it in. So, or, or use tape or something. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put a couple of stencils on here with texture paste. But before I do that, I want to put some ink down on the back of this page because I want to have some color on it, but I don't want to like put paper down or anything like that. So this has become one of my new favorite techniques and that is to take some ink, dilute it with some water. I'm looking for my paper towel. I usually always have one. Let's put that there. And I'm going to just put down some blue. Now I'm going to sop that up with, I've got some mop-up paper with some stamps on it. and It's already got blue, so... Alright, so there's the blue. And then, uh, let me dry that really quick, and I'm not going to put you on pause because this will just take me a second. I just want to get some of that moisture dried up here. There we go. Alright, now I want to... Take some iced spruce and put some of that down. I want this background to be not super colorful. Um, so the blue and gray is a good choice. Uh, let's do just a little bit more. There we go. There we go. All right. So now we've got some blue and gray which is a real pretty color combination. All right, let me get my... Hmm. You know, it's amazing to me how I can have something out at hand, set it down, and then when I turn around, I can't find it again. Do any, does anybody else have that issue? It's right here beside me, my mop-up paper that I was looking for. But we'll get another one started here. And I want to grab another paper towel here. Let's dry this, and then we'll put our texture paste on. Then I'm going to show you one of my favorite techniques with um, adding color to texture paste. Actually, I think I may put this this way. Alright, 
there we go. All right, now let's put, I want to, I want to put this down here, but one thing I do want to do, whew, oh, excuse me, I don't know where that came from. Alright, I want to put a little washi down over here so I don't um, get texture paste where I don't want it. So I'm just going to put this down here and that'll be enough. Okay, and I'm going to put this sort of over to the side and I think what I might do Let's just tape all of this down up here and down here so nothing moves. But let me get this situated a little better. All right. I don't like um, the texture paste is fine. This is Finibear. I don't like the squeeze bottle though because if you put too much out you can't get it back in and you waste it. I like the jars better I think. But the paste itself is fine. I just wish it had a different container. I'm going to put this down and then I will pause it while I, um, while I dry this. Because there's no sense you guys having to hear all of that. Heat gun going. All right. So there's the flower. I also have a couple of butterflies that I want to put on here. There's one. And here's the other one. I'm going to do this without messing up the texture paste that I already have down because I don't want to have to dry twice. I just want to go in there one time and dry it all. There we go. All right. Oops. I got a little down here that I don't want. So I'm going to go and scrape that off. And I got a little extra up here around the butterfly that I don't want. So I'm going to go up there and scrape that off. Now the flower's got a little touched here, but that's okay because um, you'll see when I color them that it'll, it'll all be okay. I'm going to level this down a little bit. That got a little bit high right there. All right. So now I'm going to go off and dry this. And when I come back, we'll add some color um, to this. Uh, isn't that pretty with that blue background? I love it. All right, I'll be back in a few minutes. All right, everybody, I'm back. It's actually been a few hours um, since I was here, but it's all dry now. Now, this texture paste is not 
very rough. It's real smooth. So we'll see if it's going to work for what I want it to do. And if it doesn't, um, we'll just put a little fixative on it. So I have got a set of pan pastels. And as you can see, they are hardly used. Some of these have never been used. I don't know why I keep them, but I do. Um, I should probably pass them on to somebody who will use them. Um, I've got all the little brushes, and if you have never used pan pastels, they're really wonderful. Now, they're not color fast, so after you put them on, um, there's all those little bottles I was looking for. After you put them on, you have to um, seal it so that the colors don't rub off. But that's okay. So I've got these little tiny, they're like little makeup brushes in here for my different colors. Get them out of the bottom of my box. And we're going to color this with some pan pastels. And the way I do that is I take my original stencil, I guess it was this way, and I put it right back over the image. And we're going to tape it down again. Um, let me get my washi tape out here. I'll get some new pieces of washi tape. And then I'm going to color over it through the stencil, blending some colors and um, really just having fun. And what I'm not sure is how well the pan pastels will adhere to that particular texture paste, but we'll find out. If it doesn't, I'll just put some sort of a, um, let me move this up a little bit so you guys can see. All right, let's take a look at There aren't a whole lot of leaves on this thing. It's mostly flower petals. So let's see what kind of colors of flowers we want. How about the pinks and, no, I don't know if the pinks and the purples will go so well with this. How about yellow and like a light blue, like a yellow ochre and a light blue? see what that does. So I just go and find my little brush that has this color on it and I'm just gonna go over the top of that color. And I think all these other little things are leaves. So I'm just going through the stencil. And then what I can do is um, spray a fixative on it. And then I can go back over with more color if I don't think there's enough color there. And the nice thing about this You'll see when I pick it up, it's going to leave like a little white highlight around the flower. It's one of the things I like about using this pan pastel. I guess these are all leaves down here. So we'll get some green out for the leaves. this green here. Maybe highlighted with some of this as well, but I really want to use this kind of olivey green, like 
for my branch. And you can combine colors. So if you have pan pastels, I would love to hear how you use them. So I'm going to put this down. Color in. I think these are all leaves here. We're going to call them leaves, even if they're not. I used to use these a lot, and I especially like them with um, texture paste. Now, I think what I was using before was like a modeling paste from um, Liquitex, I believe. And it had a lot more texture, so the color would catch on the, you know, the rough surface. That's why I wasn't sure about this with the, um, with the smooth surface. So I'm going to have to order some more of the Liquitex because I, um, I really do like it better. Okay, let's see what that looks like. Look at that. Isn't that pretty? And you can see there's a little bit of white around it. Oh, I love it. I love it. Now the other thing you can do is take like a black pen and highlight the um, petals, but I don't want to do that, at least not now. Um, what I want to do is color in these butterflies, and then maybe I'll spray it with um, a fixative. And let me see if I even have the fixative handy, or if I have. I'm in the process of redoing my whole room and there's a lot of stuff that I have put in. Oh, this says final fixative. I don't want to use the final because I want to still be able to work on it. Hold on one second. Well, I'm sorry, I should have paused that uh, recording. I'm going to go ahead and use this. And I really shouldn't be spraying this indoors, but it's just one quick little spurt. So please, if you're going to use a fixative, um, and there is final fixative, and then there's a working fixative. And... This one says final, so, but I still should be able to put stuff over it. All right, let's find the butterfly, which is here. And I have got a dark blue. I'm going to put around the edges. <sighs> and then I'm going to put some purple in the middle of that and then blend those two together. Just kind of going back and forth between my blue and my purple. Now I may also want to 
take a little bit of black and put it down the middle for the body. And there we go. Isn't that pretty? I love it. Now this guy is... nope, not that one. This one. And then what I can do also on that to really highlight that body is to, um, you know, take a pen and draw around that. Now what I really would do in that case is probably put some bling on there. I would probably put some black sparkly gems on there for the body. Okay, let's see what color should we do this one? We've got kind of the blue and purple. Let's do... Shall we do an orange? Let's see, let's do... Let's do a little bit of the red. And a little bit of the orange. And again, you can blend these colors. As you can see, I'm pulling them together, so... So they are blending. Oh, and look at that. Now, if I don't like that black in there, I did write on it with a Sharpie, but if I don't like that black in there, I can go in and erase it off, as long as I haven't put a fixative over it. Um, because I kind of like this one without. So what I'll probably do on this one is go back through and redo it with the um, blue and the purple. Oops, put that in the wrong color. Still going to be a little dark in the middle, but I'll put something over that middle anyway. But yeah, you can just go back and forth and blend your colors. Um, much like uh, colored pencils. If you do much with colored pencils, it's kind of the same idea. <sighs> there we go. And there is a little darker in the middle, but now I want to go back over after I sprayed the fixative. Um, I want to go back over... Follows Frankie Elkin. Oops, sorry about that. I hit the on button on the video I was had been watching. I was watching 49 Dragonflies um, and her recent video. Okay, let's go back over that now with the yellow ochre. And I think that's going to make it much darker. Yep. much, much darker. And then we'll have to spray the whole thing anyway. And you can, um, if you want to outline this more, you can go around it with a Stabilo All. <sighs> Look at that. Now this little petal right here didn't get the color through the stencil. 
So now that I can see where the color goes, I can go put it on manually. And just look at that. And then the green one, I'm going to make that a little bit darker. can do that too. So my suggestions on this, if you're going to do this technique, um, make sure you have some fixative on hand. You can use hairspray too as a final fixative. Um, that'll hold everything in place. Um, I like to use, you know, the regular fixative, but make sure you have fixative. And um, I would recommend using the um, the texture paste that's a little more gritty, so it'll catch the color a little more. And I don't know that I want to go around this with um, maybe the butterflies, but not the flowers. Let's see what... And I'm always afraid when I do this going around that I'm going to, you know, run off of the... Um, off of the outline and mess it up. So far, so good on this one. There we go. That makes them stand out a little more. Now, the other thing you can do is um, go in here And put some dots. You know how butterflies will sometimes have the dots on their wings. So you can really um, play this up. Isn't that pretty? And then I'll probably put some kind of little bling or something down there. I don't happen to have it out right now, but like that pen is drying up. Let's try this one. There we go. Okay, let's go around this one. And if you want to um, you know, if you wanted to go around the flowers and you didn't want it this heavy black, you could, you know, take a color pencil and, yeah, that um, pastel is clogging up the nib. Got to clean it out. And then we can... Oh, come on. You might also use um, gel pens on these so that they don't um, clog up on you because that is a problem with um, Sharpies and then some of the other um, fine liner pens if you um, use them on any kind of a medium that can get into the nib there we go isn't that pretty and that's our texture and I probably will go around this, but maybe with the pencil and just the big petals. Just to highlight them, but that's not 
doing the kind of job I was hoping. Let's see what this one does. Okay, let me uh, put you guys on hold again. It won't be but a, just a second for you guys. I'm going to do some outlining, then I'll come back when this is done. Back with my messy desk here, I'm going to put the lid back on these pan pastels. Um, and so here's what I've got so far. I'm not quite done yet. Whoops. That needs a little more dab of glue. Um, I put some black. Oh shoot, that's not what I meant to do. Well, look at here. Okay, when you pull the wrong lid off, this is what you get, but that's okay. I kind of like that down there. We cleaned it off. I don't know what I was thinking. Where was my brain? I don't know. I swear the older I get, the more my brain plays uh, nasty jokes on me. Okay, there we go. We've got little white pearls in the middle of these flowers. We've got some little black bodies on them. Now I am going to find a word because I want to put a word right across here. Actually, I want something a little Too long. That's too long. Always hope. I don't think so because we got too much vertical there. Let's do a. Let's do an inspire and let's cut it down or tear the edges on it. I like to do that. Boy, this is a long video. All right, now let's find let me see. I'm going to outline this in black because everything else is outlined in black. And what I ended up using around the flowers, I used my Stabilo All and I just sharpened it, put a really sharp point on it. But I did not, um, there we go, but I did not um, wet it. So let's put down. There we go. We're inspired by new things. And then we can put this in here. Look how pretty that is. Now I'm going to use, because I don't want to have to put glue down all over that thing, I'm going to use some double sided tape for this because it will hold just fine. And it's a lot faster. A lot less messy. And very sticky. So do y'all use double-sided tape? I love this stuff. I love it for putting pockets down. 
I messed up that piece of it. I love it for putting pockets down, for doing stuff like this where it doesn't need glue. And put one right down the middle. All right. There we go. Let's peel off the backing. The only thing is, you got to be careful when you put it down because, boy, once you put it down, it's down. It is down. My back looks pretty grungy with all the stuff I was working with, but that's okay. Um, before I put this down, I'm going to do one last thing. And that is, I'm going to spray it with the fixative so that the, um, uh, what did I do with that fixative? There it is. Uh, so that the pan pastels don't come off. There we go. And that will just sort of seal everything in place. Come on. Now, I do want to put a piece of paper under here so I can see exactly where the edge is. There we go. And now I'm going to go around it with some black ink. And so for those of you who were really enjoying all the mixed media stuff, and I've had several comments about how fun it's been to play with some mixed media, here's some more, the Pan Pastels. Um, I got these from a lady gosh years ago and she had them and she never used them and she was just giving them away and I had already bought a couple colors I mean these things are really expensive and I said oh I would love to have them but let me pay you something for them and she said no she said I just want them to go to somebody who will use them so they're not just sitting on my shelf. And I did use them for a while. And then, I don't know, they just kind of got put on the back shelf. And there we go. So there, folks, is day 23 texture. And there's all kinds of texture with the pearls, the little enamel dots, the texture paste. Um, the colors is visual texture. So there it is. Thanks so much. This was a really long, didn't intend for it to be this long, but thanks for sticking with me. If you haven't yet, please think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.